Young women growing up in the First World War were the first generation to reject the wearing of a corset. Instead, they adapted chemises to form an early sort of bra. Their knickers no longer had open legs and petticoats helped to cover the gap at the midriff. Elastic was occasionally used, but was vulnerable to perishing, so it was usually removed before washing. Stockings were machine-knitted in silk, wool, or cotton. As skirts became shorter, stockings were becoming finer, too. And so women began shaving their legs for the first time. Stockings were secured in place beneath the knee with buckled elastic garters or held up by suspenders from a girdle. Skirts and blouses were the most frequent form of dress, and delicate sheer cotton blouses remained a popular hangover from the Edwardian era. During the war, skirts became fuller as well as shorter, so as not to impede women as they walked and worked. They were simple and stylish in their cut, with interesting embellishments, including pockets that were both practical and decorative, and interestingly placed buttons that were just for show. A delicate brooch was added at the neckline of the blouse to keep everything tidy and modest. Hairstyles had become softer and more relaxed. Some women even cut their hair at the sides so that when their hair was tied back, they appeared to have a short hairstyle, prefiguring the changes to come. The shorter hemline also brought about a greater interest in shoes, which now came in many different styles and height of heel. Corsets, however, had kept the body core insulated and warm, with women needing only a shawl to cover the shoulders to keep the chill off. Once corsets were no longer worn, Cardigans, waistcoats, and jumpers became vital alternatives for warmth. This popular trend in knitwear was also liberating. Shawls restricted the movement of the arms as they were needed to keep the shawl in place. Sweaters now permitted an active involvement in life, the workplace, and factory, and even the playing of sport. Knitting was also very fashionable with books of knitting designs being published regularly including designs for cardigans, jumpers, and waistcoats, as well as for hats, gloves, scarves, and children in baby clothes. A slouchy beret known as a tam and a pull-on hat known as a toque were very popular. Women's knitting skills had also become a vital part of the home front war effort with millions of pairs of socks, gloves, scarves, and balaclavas being produced, parceled, and posted to the front line via the Red Cross. If you are interested in creating some of the knitwear yourself, you can find many of these patterns in Centenary Stitches, a book of modernized 1910s knitting patterns. It's available as a book or in digital form as an ebook. Follow the on screen link or the one in the description.